Hello and welcome back to another video. Today's video is a glute workout. I feel like it has been a while since I uploaded any kind of workout content full stop so I apologise for that if there is any specific fitness workout sort of content that you want to see me doing um just let me know in the comments below and i will try and sort that for you so yeah today's video is a full glute workout full walk through not in real time i do want to get into doing some of those but i've not had a chance yet so i'm just going to voice over it give you a full explanation on form tips what i'm doing why i'm doing these moves because i've got a few new moves that i've been really really um enjoying recently in my glute training so i'm going to give you a bit of information on those yeah in general i have been experimenting quite a lot with my training in general but more specifically my glute training recently um i've definitely broadened my horizons in terms of where i'm getting my information from the resources i'm using the kind of research i'm doing um who i'm who i'm going to for my information basically and with that comes a little bit of unlearning a little bit of like conflicting opinions especially when it comes to glute training and movement certain things that i have just taken as bible from certain people that actually might not be quite correct um and also might just not be optimal and why would you not want to be doing things um optimally so i've been experimenting quite a bit recently doing a lot more research into this sort of stuff and I've posted about it a little bit on Instagram. Obviously I did my glute series last year and it did really really well. You all seemed to really enjoy it and love it which was fantastic. I kind of felt like it had run its course which is why I stopped but now that I'm broadening my horizons learning more about training in general but also learning more about glute training certain things that like may not be correct all that sort of stuff I I'm considering doing another glute series or just some more videos on glutes that might not even need to be part of a series but if you do want to see that then let me know because obviously I'm only going to do it if it's what the people want so let me know if that is something that you would be interested in. This workout four moves only I know that some people are going to look at this and think why is she only doing four moves trust me four moves is a pretty decent workout if you are training to the intensity that you should be if you are doing 10 plus exercises in a session there is no way that you are giving as much effort as you should be doing to your sets because you would just not be able to complete the workout if you were really putting the effort into every single set that you need to be doing so yeah it is only four exercises but that doesn't mean it's a shit workout it doesn't mean it's an easy workout if you are training with the right intensity you do not need to be in the gym for hours and hours doing loads of different exercises pick four to six exercises um for a session is typically what i tend to go for and give them your all but yeah i've got my laptop here and i'm just gonna get into the workout so movement number one is a floating deadlift now i got this from coach mark carroll on instagram and basically what you want to do with this so as you can see i'm stood on a plate you would want to use obviously i'm not using colored plates here i've just got the plain black ones but if you're using a colored one i would say to go for a 20 kg one or a 25 kg one just to make sure that you've got the right height there's no point in doing these and using a super skinny plate to stand on because it's not going to give you the kind of extra platform and extra height that you need to do the movement correctly i feel like this is going to be a bit of a lengthier explanation because it is a new workout that i have not done on my channel before so i may actually just have to rerun <laughs> the clips of me doing it whilst i'm explaining it but basically as i've just said you want to stand on a platform stand on the plate in a conventional stance so your feet just about shoulder width apart maybe a bit further in if um that's what suits you better and then you're going to want to roll the bar so it's over the midline of your foot now with these they might look like they are supposed to be like a deficit rdl they're not it's a floating deadlift it's a different movement so a floating deadlift follows more of a conventional de deadlift pattern you're gonna grab the bar come up to the top of the movement then from the top of the movement you need to hinge your hips back so following like an rdl kind of form until the bar gets to around knee high when the bar reaches around knee height you are then going to bend at the knees and come down just like you would for a conventional deadlift however this is a floating deadlift the clue is in the name 
him so those plates are never actually going to touch the floor you are going to come down pause for one or two seconds at the bottom and then come back up when you come back up you do not want to hyper extend at the top there is no need to like massively squeeze your glutes at the top and like really thrust forward you don't need to do that so with this deadlift variation what this basically means in terms of what it's doing why are we doing it floating sort of thing when you are doing a conventional deadlift every single time that the plates touch the floor you are losing tension on your glutes you're not holding the weight there's no tension when those plates touch the floor and you are not having to hold that weight anymore this is not me going against conve conventional deadlifts by the way they're still great there's nothing wrong with them it's just a variation so because with the floating deadlift those plates are never touching the floor they're always hovering just above and you're going to pause for about one to two seconds at the bottom what that means is tension is being kept on the muscles it doesn't replace a conventional deadlift it doesn't replace a standard style deadlift it's not there to replace an rdl it's just a variation just like a rdl isn't there to replace a conventional deadlift these exercises that i'm showing because some of them are a bit new they're not to replace what the standard version of that movement is doing they're not inherently more superior they're just a variation to bias certain things certain muscle groups get a bit more out of it that is a floating deadlift shout out to coach mark carroll for that one he is amazing follow him on instagram then we are moving on to a Kaz glute bridge and um, these are by someone called coach kasem kasim on instagram um, i'm not entirely sure i've probably just butchered his name but he is another account i would definitely recommend you follow so same setup as a standard hip thrust the difference here is that you are mainly working your glutes in the shortened position so as you can see the range of motion for these compared to a standard hip thrust is much much shorter and again like i've just said with the floating deadlift about like it just being a variation this is just a variation of a thrust bridge pattern movement it's not there to replace hip thrusts i still have hip thrusts in my weekly program i just do these on one day as a variation so yeah they are working your glutes mainly in the shortened position and you are pretty much just focusing on the top portion of this range of motion of a normal hip thrust this is when your glutes are going to be working the most typically in a hip thrust anyway and i highly recommend trying these out if you are someone who finds that your quads or hamstrings no matter how like perfect the 90 degree angle is when you're doing your hip thrust if you are someone who you know your form is spot on but you personally find that your hamstrings or your glutes take over when you're doing hip thrusts you've tried everything in the, under the sun and you just it's frustrating you give these a go because these do focus on that short that top portion of the range of motion which your quads and hamstrings are just not going to be doing as much of the work it is more glutes i'm not saying that your quads and hamstrings aren't involved at all of course they are but it is a lot more glute focused so do give these a go and then we are moving on to bulgarian split squats so recently i have actually been preferring doing these just holding a weight in one hand um i find my balance is much better and therefore my mind to muscle connection with these with my glutes is a ton um better and just a lot more beneficial because i'm not having to focus as much with balancing so when you are doing a split squat essentially it is you are elevating your rear foot and you are grabbing the weight and you're gonna come down into the split squat come back up this is sped up but you have just seen the much more slowed down real lifetime kind of tempo that you would want to be using now if you are wanting to bias your quads more when you are doing a bulgarian split squat what you will want to do is take a shorter stride and come down at a much more straight angle with your torso whereas if you want to bias your glutes a little bit more you're going to want to take a little bit of a wider stride away from the bench and sink back into it with your hips so this means that your torso instead of being like super straight up when you are coming up and down you're going to want to like lean forward ever so slightly and really sink back um and you will definitely feel it more 
in your glutes over your quads if you do it that way obviously if you take a shorter stride and you're more upright you'll feel it more in your quads but yeah i feel like i've gone over form for split squats a million times so i'm just going to leave that one there sorry if that angle has just changed it started raining um and i've also just knocked this over and smashed it so i um had to stop recording and put my camera down for a second yeah so moving on to the final movement of this workout which is a glute kickback now the machine that i'm using here i am well aware that most people probably won't have this in their gym if you do then great i actually love this machine I kind of prefer using this to cables. I find that I get a much better mind muscle connection when I use this machine as opposed to a cable kickback personally. But if you don't have this machine, obviously a substitute for this is to just do a cable kickback, which I have given form tips on in my glute workout video where the thumbnail is me in some like green shorts um i'll link it down below if you don't know what i'm talking about so that you can go to that and see a cable kickback demonstration with a full explanation on like form all that sort of stuff but yeah that is the full workout only four moves but very very effective if you are training with the intensity that you should be putting the effort into the moves that you should be pushing yourself and um, obviously it goes without saying no one workout is gonna build muscle for you or anything like that it's a conjunction of consistency over time progressive overload with your training and also nutrition will play a role in your results as well um so yeah i always just like to make that clear at the end of a workout video but yeah if there are any other workouts that you want to see me film that you want to see me post let me know if you've got any questions about anything that i've spoken about if any of my explanations were unclear at all please just leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, do give a thumbs up because it really helps me out. Subscribe if you want to and you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you're not on Reddit already because I'm super active on there. But yeah, I will respond to your comments if you have any questions below.